What's going on guys, Cobra here, and welcome, welcome to RimWorld. Uh, this is going to be my season one of my RimWorld Let's Play, a game I'm excited to bring to you guys, one I've been thinking about for a long time now. Um, and on that note, what I wanted to do is I wanted to first and foremost say thank you to Tynan uh, Sylvester. He's of course of Ludion, uh, which is the developer of RimWorld, and I contacted him a little while back. I was like, hey man, here's my channel, it ain't big, it ain't much, but I really, really love to do your game. I do games like it, you know, little games that kind of build off of Dwarf Fortress, and obviously you guys know Timber and Stone, and, and Prison Architect and stuff. Um, and he was very gracious and nice enough to just quickly send me a key and say, hey, hey man, have a blast. So I want to say thank you to that. I do want to make note that he does also have a game design book out. I have I've actually read that i read that actually about a year ago actually when i first kind of this this game kind of came on my radar i had a lot of stuff other stuff going on so i didn't buy it right away but i was like hey let me check out that game it's actually pretty interesting not just as like a youtuber or anybody who has like any desire to be in uh, game design just as a game player to kind of get an, a little bit of insight on what goes into designing these games i will link that in the description if you're interested so Let's get right into RimWorld. Um, I cut through some of the setup, but as you can see right here, it's zero hour, May 1st of the first year. We are on a boreal forest, for those of you know that, know that know what that means. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with this game, don't worry. I'm going to kind of come from a newbie perspective. And actually, it's a really good time to say that. This Let's Play will not be done from the perspective of an expert play uh, Let's Play, as it is maybe with Timber and Stone, where I come with hundreds of hours of experience, and I kind of know that game inside and out. And then you've got, like, Prison Architect, where my mind just loves to chew on efficiency things. Um, and while this game looks like a marriage between Prison Architect graphically, let me zoom in and show you, see, it looks very similar. Uh, it builds very much like Timber and Stone. It, 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 it obviously harkens a lot from Dwarf Fortress. So if you're a fan of that game, you're going to love this game. I've been loving this game. I probably have about 10 or 15 hours into this game now. Just kind of learned the ropes. So much going on. I even tried to live stream it one night. Didn't work so good because I had to focus so much on the game and not getting just run over by the game. Um, that I wasn't able to interact as much as I'd like to. But I will be doing that more in the future. So if you're interested in seeing live streams of this game, maybe not Timber and Stone. That's a hard game to live stream. But like Prison Architect, definitely. We'd, I've done War of Mine. Click my Twitch link down below in the description and follow me there. We'll have a good time. And it's always always fun. Um, so let's dive right in. Let's talk about my settlers here. Um, like I said, I already set them up, but I'm going to give you a little layout. It's kind of weird. Like It's kind of uh, a bad omen, I think. I have a Grim. <laughs> I have a bad luck. But luckily, it's balanced out by tacos. I mean, who doesn't love tacos? So, you know, the, the kind of morbidly foreshadowing of grim and bad luck are kind of balanced out with tacos. So, I could, and those are those are not entered by me. Those are actually with the game generated. Uh, the reason I need to show you the actual setup, and if it's something you guys want to see, let me know. I figured a lot of you wouldn't be familiar with this game, so I didn't want to waste a lot of time going through the setup of the world and things. I'll just talk about that. And then picking my characters, I'm awfully particular about that. If you have questions about how I pick my characters, please ask in the comments and I will address them. I don't want to go too deeply into it, but I will talk about these guys right now. This is a little mod. It's just a UI mod. That's it. That's all it brings to the game. Makes it much easier to keep track of people in battle and things. I will link that in the description as well. Uh, if I forget, just mention in the comments. I'll get it to you. It's a very popular mod. A lot of one a lot of people use. So let's do a quick first scan of the. Actually, no. I'll introduce you to the cast characters first. I'm sorry. I'm a little a little haphazard. I've been excited to do this Let's Play uh, for several weeks now, and I just haven't had a chance. So today I got off a little early, and I'm like diving in to do this Let's Play. So let's start off with Mr. Grimm, who's got a little afro here. Good looking dude. Sorneal Grim Sleeled. I, I don't even know. It's the last time I'll say that. We're just going to call him Grid. Grim. Can't even pronounce that. He was a shelter child, urban world entrepreneur. And let's go over what we're going to have Mr. Grim do here. He is going to be our medical warden. Uh, that's social is for prisoners. Very important part of this game. So let's see here. This is a priority list. From left to right, your prisoners are going to do these things first. They're going to try to do the number ones. So they're going to do firefighting. Is there fire? Yes. I'm going to go put it out. Fire is a pain in the ass in this game. Doesn't work very well. No fire. Check steer. Doctor. I have another one. Anybody hurt? Anybody need help? Yes. No. Whatever. Moves on down the list. So this is kind of how you designate what your people are. So as you can see here, he's fi everybody's firefighter. Everybody's a patient. Everybody has the ability to be a patient. Um, he I have is the doctor. Obviously, you see the medical. The two fires, for those you don't know, means they have a burning passion for that ability. It means they will learn that ability much quicker than uh, something they don't have. Uh, you know, a fire next to you. Uh, some people are even limited. They're unable to do certain things. Like you can see here, bad luck is he's just unable to do art. It's part of his personality traits. Um, he is a fast walker. These are I, I weigh these heavily. I don't like I don't want my starting three to be incapable of anything. Now let me just say this real quick. Um, I picked the starting three. I took what the game gave me as names. If you would like to be have your name entered as we recruit people in, I will be putting commenters' names in. 
I just like the connection that makes. I still have a small channel. I'm still able to do that. I like to take advantage of that. How do I do that? I do that by who's you know showing the most support, feedback. You're know, just interacting with me in the comments, things like that. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just just be around, be active, and be part of my little community here on my channel. I like to do that. It builds my connection with my characters, which this game already has a really good connection. When someone dies in this game, you get pretty sad. Um, now, so then if it's aimed named after some of you guys that I feel responsible for, for me, it just kind of it adds to the gravity of the whole experience. So we will be doing that. I don't know exactly when I will kick that off. It's going to be when uh, you know enough candidates emerge from you guys. And when I get enough recruits in the game, obviously, of course, um, that could take a little while. This game ramps up a little bit slowly, but once it kind of gets into stride, this game throws a lot at you. So don't worry, there's going to be tons of action. I'm actually excited to see how this game fits on YouTube. I think it's a really good fit, actually. Uh, it'll move a lot faster than, say, Timber and Stone, for sure. Anyway, back to the characters that I've tried. There's just so much to talk about in this game. I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by it. I hope you can get that in my tone. Um, so basically, this guy, I think he's going to be my medic. He's going to be my doctor. He's going to take care of the prisoners. He's going to try to convince the prisoners to come over. Everything else he is able to do if these jobs are done, but he's not going to be particularly prioritizing them. I, you know, I don't want him overgrowing plants when there's someone hurt. You get it? Um, I do have researching clicked over here. That will come into play probably a little bit down the line when I get a research table up, and I'm going to have to research some certain things. We'll get to that when it comes. I just put this here so I don't forget, so I realize that he's my researcher, but that's not going to come into play so much so early. So that is Mr. Green pretty good dude and we got bad luck joe bad luck rogers he is a male human colonist 55 actually i don't know how that slipped through i don't usually like to have older gentlemen or ladies in my colonists but then uh, now that i think about it they haven't let's check him I, I really this could be a bad thing right here if he's already got old people problems this is bad oh this is bad <laughs> oh this is my first mess up here actually and he's meant to be, see, I was in such a rush to get going, and I looked through so many characters. I needed a soldier and a miner. found these. They look great. I just went with it. Pessimist, I saw this. I decided I would I would deal with this. Negative eight, because it was very hard to find this combo for me. He worked otherwise. He, the things he was incapable of didn't matter to me, but I missed this. Two cataracts. I, I, I missed his age is what I missed. If I had I seen the age, I would have checked into this. He's got cataracts already. He's got very poor sight for a soldier, for a shooter. I can remedy this by through bionic eyes. That probably is something that won't be available to me very early, though. So this, this could be a problem. Um, he's in a little pain. He's old. He's got an old scar. This is not good. Let me check. Uh, Grim, what do you, you got? No injuries. Let's see tacos. What do you got? Right arm bite scar. Wow, you guys are pretty messed up already. That's, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever come across that yet. Cataracts, problem. That's a problem. We're going to have to remedy that or he'll die. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at bad luck. You can see I told you I needed a soldier. I needed somebody who could shoot and hunt. I needed somebody that can mine. So you see here, he's obviously the patient. He, he can doctor if I need it. He's going to prioritize hunting. He's going to be bringing in our immediate food right out of the chute. He's capable of doing these things, not prioritizing them, and then mining. Basically, what I have it set up here is it's going to look through the ones. Any fire? No. Anybody? Am I hurt? No, I'm not hurt. All right, move on. All right, number one, boom. Is there any mining to do? Yes, I will go do it. There's going to be a lot of mining to do in the beginning. I like to burrow into the mountain. I do like the Dwarven Fortress thing. Uh, it's kind of a newbie move, but I'm still a newbie at the game. Um, I eventually, we will try to build something outside in another, in another season probably, but not for this one. Uh, no mining to do. I'm going to have to manage this a little bit to make sure I don't just totally dominate his time with mining. I'll mess that up, I promise you. Um, then he's going to go to here hunting. He's going to go out and get food. Um, because we're gonna need food early in probably the second or third day, but you can see everything else he is able to do. I'm a little upset, actually. You know what I'm gonna do? Bad luck. Why don't you just get the thing, Grim? You are you are able to shoot. Oh, where's the pistol? There should be a pistol. I s some things can be hard to see. I don't see a pistol. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, there's a knife right there. All right, so maybe once they move. All right, so just grab the knife. All right, so let's take a look at tacos, and then we'll get a move on and check out the map. Like, the first episode's kind of going to be set up. I'm going to try to get through it as quick as I can, and then we'll get right into the action, uh, either with the end of episode one or the start of episode two. The action in, as in base building and trying not to die. Uh, this is Alina Tacos Hughes. She's 36. That's usually probably about the cutoff for me. She was a medieval slave, Starship Janitor. We saw that she is. she does have some issues. Oh, I had this open. I won't do it. She did have some issues, but nothing major. Fast Walker Steadfast. Steadfast is great. Um, it keeps the mental break threshold. Mental break's a bad thing. I'm going to have to deal with You're going to get to know it. Don't worry. Uh, basically, your players, they can get cabin fever. They can see their friends die. They can get hungry. There's uh, psychic events that happen that can make your people go crazy. And they lash out. They run away from the colony. It, it's really bad. It's something you definitely have to manage quite a bit. 
she's kind of my utilitarian uh, person. You can see construction growing. She's going to grow her crops. She's going to build things, help out with the mining a little bit. You can see here, you know, same setup here. Cooking. She's going to be a cook. Cook is important. That one thing I am lacking, so I'm hoping one of my early recruits will have some cooking uh, talent and passion that I can then make a t just a devoted cook because as a number one cook, I like to have that construction growing, can repair, which I I'll probably bump that uh, higher later on. Yeah, actually, we're going to. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want that three. That'll be good. So we do that. And then crafting. And, and, and so there you go. Um, there are our cast of characters. These are the original three. Uh, it's my goal that they will be with us at the end. Uh, knowing this game as I do probably won't happen. Now, I have three save games up until now. I said I have like 10 or 15 um, hours played. Two of them have failed miserably. Some good stories. I will get to those and tell you those. The third one I still have ongoing. It's actually further into the end game. So I continue to play it just so I can kind of learn the end game. Which is kind of fun. Is that? Yeah, that's the pistol. Oh no, you had that. Let's see. Bad luck, Grim. What are you? Are you sh able to shoot at all? Uh, so no, but you're the medic. So you are gonna take the knife. You're gonna take. Uh, we're just gonna want to move a little bit. Where did the pistol go? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, grab that pistol. I want to get the meals and the medicine. All right, so there we go. Let's take a look at the map now. So this is a pretty big mountainous map. Got a lot of room up here. This is great. That's where we're going to build our base. We just got to scan around. These are cryopods, just for those who don't know. There are things sleeping in here. This is a futuristic setting. It's basically futuristic timber and stone, futuristic dwarf fortress, if you will. Um, I can go open these, and I might get people things I can handle and kill and get their loot. And I'm, I'm like, it's a nice boost in the beginning. But there's a very good chance there's things in here I can't handle, and they'll quickly wipe me out. Or at least decimate me to the point where I'll just kind of limp my way towards death. We're going to leave these alone for now. I have quite a few over here. These are cool for later in the game when I have a little more means to take care of them. And there's different sizes, which I like. There's even a small one here we can get earlier. So that's pretty good. You can see some some muffalo, as they're called. That's, that's got to be a food source for us. That's good. There's some other things. Oh, there's some elk there. That's good. I'm playing on a relatively big map. I like that because my system can run it. Gives me more chances of getting these types of resources. And then when people do raid me gives me a little more time so when they pop in on the edge of the screen it takes them a long time to come across this map now it means sometimes it takes me a long time to get across the map this is actually gonna be a very slow map as I'm looking there's a lot of swamp land and stuff I don't know if I noted we are in the boreal um, zone forest boreal forest zone I don't want to do tundra I'm intrigued by it I want to do it just didn't want to do that as my first let's play we'll probably do that next time it's very very cold very very unforgiving I like the Boreal where it's got the change of seasons. It provides different challenges, dealing with the heat, dealing with the cold. Whereas Tundra, you're really just dealing with the cold. You're dealing with severe cold, though. You may want to open this up and see what's in there at some point. But you can kind of get a scan of the map. We've got some supplies here. I'm going to keep those forbidden. So what we're going to do is pick out a starting location. Here are my people right here. I think this is going to be my start. It's nice in the center of the map. I like that. This would be better, but I don't like the swamp. I, I could re like remove this later on when I have some more assets, but I can't do it right now. So I'm just gonna use this instead. Go in there, start our first base, and we're gonna we're gonna get this real quick. This little this is a steam geyser. I can get that. That'll produce uh, heat for me. Heat. I'm sorry, not uh, heat. Electricity. Probably steal this one, and we'll run some power cord up here so they can't be decimated. And this one. So I have three kind of at my disposal. That's awesome. Uh, I have my my game. I was just talking about as my end game. Excuse me. Um, I only just recently, years in, found my second one in the mountain here that I just ran upon. I found two in the mountain, and it took me a long time, and it really hindered me for a long time. So this this means I oh I got another one here I can't even harness. So I'm gonna have potentially four without even digging. So that that's really good. So what we need to do, uh, we need to add a stockpile. So we're just gonna stockpile it up right in here. That'll be that. We will have a growing zone as well. I'm just food is going to be a huge issue. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. See, I'm still learning these things. No, that's too. That's fine. We're gonna have them dig. Just get some of that going. Potatoes, and we'll have you make strawberries. That'll be that. That'll be the stockpile. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give a little kind of mine order. And we're gonna go right in the mountain here. That's pretty deep, actually. We're not gonna need it that deep. Let's go. Uh, yeah, this is pretty good. So we got it's gonna be a table. Let's make it four. And then we need six. To, yeah, that's good. Do the same thing here. This is gonna be our temporary little base. You'll see as we dig it out. It's gonna be a door. That's gonna be the cooler. And this is gonna be where I stock the food. And then we're gonna have this. This is gonna be 
for prisoners, and that should get us going. That's like the bare minimum that I've come up with in my system. Well, some of you guys might have different ideas. Uh, this over here is going to be beds and a little bit of a living area. We'll have one, two, three, and a hospital beds. This over here, I'm going to have a butchering table and a, a food food uh, kitchen table, whatever it's called, the cooking table. And here is going to be the walk-in freezer to keep our food. So let's get these guys. Actually, let me just set up some chopping of wood command. And then we will need some power as well. Actually, yeah. Um... I'm trying to think if I should change these things around so that I can get a better orientation of the wind turbines, but we'll see. Um, okay, so let's get going. We'll move the speed up. How much time we got? Yeah, we got it probably about another 10 minutes. So we'll get into it. Get into our setup. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Prioritize hauling. Prioritize hauling. I'd like to get these over there. Everything else can kind of kind of sit. If you don't bring the meals over, it's kind of like a buggy mess, to be quite honest. Um, they will start to wander around. Like, they'll go down here to eat every time. It, it's kind of annoying. So, my race here is to... It's still relatively cold. This is kind of springtime. This is the part of the growing season. I, I did that to kind of help myself along the way. I did move it to start in May. We're going into the summer. That's going to give me the chance to kind of grow some crops outside if I need. Now, my goal is to move these inside and have everything fortified. I uh, have kind of a kill box in here. I try not to use turrets. Uh, I feel it's a little cheesy. Sometimes you have to do it. You, you know, to, to help you cope, help you get by, you have to do it. Um, but I try not to do it. I try to defend my colony simply with my people's gunfighting abilities and their ability to defend themselves using tactics and fortifications and things. That's what I try to do. Um, if I use turrets, it's not really as a main defense line. It's more um, as a way to kind of like almost attract the enemies to go at the turrets so I have time for my, my citizens to kill them. So that's, that's how I usually do it. We'll see. Everything evolves here. Beds, build a room. That's what we're working on. Let's continue to take a look around. She's eating again already. I don't, I got eight, nine, nine meals, so 17 meals, three people. That's a couple days worth, not a ton. I do have some over here that I will. Okay, I got a bunch over there, that's cool. So let's take you tacos. Come out here and haul these. Take a little time off your farm to bring those in. His job is just to mine like crazy. He is my, I gotta, I gotta learn these people. He's the, the hunter too, so once he gets his basically mined out, I'll probably send him out to hunt. We're gonna need some steel. And we're going to need some power. I'm going to need some research before I can do that. So let's just uh, figure out where we're going to put a wind turbine up. See, I, I almost should have done it like this, I think. I still might, anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to put them over here so that's overhanging the swamp. I think that's a good idea. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. That should be, that should be good. I don't think there should be a roof. I'm going to take up some of the farm, but that's okay. So, let's see, the, the, by that piece of wood, so we want to be clear of that. And then where is that? Right by that. Alright, so that should give me some power started. The, the reason I don't like that, it's obviously going to take up some of the farm. Kind of bad planning. But these farms are going to move. They're only temporary. Um, and these are obviously easy targets. If I get attacked, then I will get attacked. Uh, loosely, how the game works, there's a little bit of an AI storyteller. I'm doing classic Cleopatra for those of you guys that have... Um, Play the game. It's basically a, an AI that kind of builds as you go. It's based off your wealth, your the silver you have, the citizens you have, the weaponry you have. It, it takes all that into account, and it ramps up the difficulty. Starts sending bigger raids at you and bigger mechs and, and things like that. Um, I'm playing that. I'm playing at 100%. Uh, I don't know if I can show you that or not, but uh, yeah, it is at 100%. Let's see. Can I show you that? Game options. Yeah, see. There you go. Classic Cassandra. Cassandra Classic. Dyslexing me. 100%. So there you go. That's what we're playing at. Everything should be set up, I think. I don't think I changed anything in there. Okay. And so right now, basically, this is one of the few times we're just kind of sitting here. And we're letting them do their thing. Because there's a lot of work to be done before I can really do anything. I'm kind of racing. Whoa. Whoa. That's interesting. Hmm. I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I don't. This is uh, going to change some ideas. There's really nothing in here of um, benefit to me except for this. I can get rid of this later. I wish a water was in need. That would be pretty cool. Okay, so let's just change some plans here. We don't need to mine this out. We're going to have to change some ideas. I'm going to let him... Actually, you might as well mine that. And then mine all the way through so I can run through. This should be okay. 
but what I will have to do then is we're gonna do that for now what we're gonna do here I'm trying to think then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel all this this is just gonna be an entryway so that I can defend this and then since I have it, what we'll do is we'll make little rooms in here. So this will be the kitchen we were talking about. Four by seven, we'll do it. Four by six is plenty. Yep. And then we're going to do that door. Mm -mm -mm. No, we'll do that door. And then we'll do this one. I don't know what that noise is. And then this is going to be the walk-in cooler part. So we're going to have a little heating unit, cooling unit there. All right, and then right here we'll just do we we'll do it like a bunk room. Do it four like that, and then that's gonna be that. This is like I'm throwing for a big loop here. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like much, but that's gonna be. Yeah, how do I want to do this? I don't like that. Let's get rid of that. So this is gonna be like a little hallway, and then I'll do the cells like this. Three by three. And the only reason I like to do these early is because if I get fortunate enough and I get someone, um, it's really cool because, oh, actually, I should be able to then bring that inside, shouldn't I? Uh, let's see, zone, growing zone. I don't know how much this is gonna grow. We'll try it. That'll be that'll be nice. I could theoretically bring a solar energy thing in here, but we'll, we'll just do a we'll do a plant uh. A plot in there. I want to see how much they can plant it. I don't know. I don't know how viable this area is going to be, like for sunlight and things. So let's just see how those grow. You guys are there. You all right? You getting there? We're planting that up. I should kill one of these. All right. So that's the first curveball we're getting there. So uh, I'm gonna actually sign off on episode one here. Whoa. whoa, whoa. What roofs? This this is honestly, in my other game. I lose more people to roof collapses than I do to the enemy at this point. I don't see where the roof collapse. Actually, I, can't. I don't see where it collapsed. It must have been right in something in here, maybe. Maybe it fell into the water, so thereby disappeared? I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there. Would have been really cool if there's a steam geyser in here. Seems to be plentiful steam geysers, but I was just starting to say I'm going to... Where did my other person? Oh, you're both there. I'm going to take a break now. I'm going to end episode one because I want to kind of have episode one being the setup. We had our first surprise. Obviously, I've introduced you to our cast of characters, Grim, Bad Luck, and Tacos. I love those names. It's so cool. But thanks for watching, guys. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do particular things. Here's your chance. It's episode one, brand new season, total new game. I'm excited to bring this to you guys. And hopefully this is going to be a long season. I don't know. You really do not know this game. This game is brutal. This game is ruthless. It, it just throws things at you, and it really tries to kick you in the teeth. So, all right. What is collapsing, though? Is this right here? This must... Was that there before? I don't know. I have to look at the tape. That's it. That's all I'm digging from there. I'm going to have to be careful in here. I cannot... If I lose someone right now, that's game over. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That's going to end episode one. I'm going to come right back after this with episode two. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.